So we're all used to taking some force vector and breaking that force vector up into x and y components. This would be the y component, this would be the x component, and this hypotenuse, that would be my actual vector. But now, let's say we had some other direction, just some random, random direction. What we can do is we can actually find the two components, the two parts of this force that are going parallel to, here's my parallel component right there, and perpendicular to this blue line here. So this will be my perpendicular component. So remember, these two are components. Remember what components are. Components are just smaller vectors that do that tip to tail adding to add up to the main vector. So the objective here is to find these two components instead of the conventional x and y components. And how do we do that? Well, let's, let's first pretend that we had a vector, some vector going in the direction of this line. And let's just call it, you know, vector AB, position vector AB. We can do the dot product between these two vectors and watch how that plays out. So, don't forget how the dot product works. Doing the dot product is just one of the ways of multiplying two vectors by each other. And doing so in the dot product way will get you a scalar. There's, and there's two ways of getting the scalar. One way is taking the product of each pair of like components and then adding them together. And the other way is taking the length of one vector, multiplying it by the length of the other vector, and then the cosine of the angle in between them. That would be this angle right here. So watch how we manipulate the dot product for our purposes here. We know that we want the component of this force in the direction of this line and perpendicular to this line. But like we, like we identified earlier, that's going to be this line right here, the parallel component, and this line right here, the perpendicular component. Just know that this is a right this is a right angle. This is a right triangle, which is great. And notice that the hypotenuse times the cosine of that angle theta will get us the adjacent, which is our parallel component, and the hypotenuse times the sine of that angle will get us the opposite side, which in our case is the perpendicular component. So I can find this parallel component super easy. I just need to find magnitude of f times cosine of theta. Well, there it is right there. All I got to do is get, get it by itself. And all I have to do to do that is divide both sides of the equation by the length of my blue vector, my position vector AB. It's as simple as that. It cancels here and I'm left with magnitude of f times the cosine of theta. So if I have both of these vectors in Cartesian vector form, ij's and k's, and if I have the lengths, the magnitudes of both vectors as well, I can easily calculate this right here, no problem. And once I know that, I can just use Pythagorean theorem here. This squared plus this squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And that will allow me to solve for the perpendicular component. So in a nutshell, that's how this concept works here. It's just us manipulating the power of the dot product to first calculate our parallel component and then our perpendicular component. So let's put this concept to work in this problem right here. So if I'm going to carry out our plan here, I need both our force vector and our position vector to be in Cartesian vector form. So we'll start with the force vector first. I got to be good with using, uh, using the double projection technique to break down a 3D force vector. 
So I'm going to start with this right triangle right here. The hypotenuse is 90, the magnitude of the force. My angle right here is that 60. So I can do 90 times the sine of 60 to get that opposite side, this one right here. And I realized that this opposite side is pointing up, which makes it the z component. And that'll be a positive z component. So a positive z component. Now let me go for this adjacent side right here. And that adjacent side is neither perfectly pointing in the x nor the y directions. So this is that double projection that we need. So my double projection will equal 90 cosine of 60. All right, so I'm done with that top right triangle. Let me switch right triangles here to this right triangle. Hopefully you can see that. The hypotenuse of this right triangle is that 90 cosine of 60, that double projection. And here's my angle right here, the 45. So I can do my double projection, the hypotenuse, times the sine of 45 to get that opposite, this one right here. And that will be my x component. And I can see it's going off in the negative x direction. So negative x direction. And then I can take that same hypotenuse and times it by the cosine of 45 degrees to get this adjacent right here. And that will be the y component. And it looks like this component is pointing in the positive y direction. So this will be a positive j hat. So I've stepped through the right triangles of this double projection situation. And now I have the z, the i, the x, and the y components. So let me just write them all out on one line. So here is my force vector all mapped up in x, y, and z components. And now I need to make that position vector from A to B. And I know to do that, I can just do the final point, the coordinates of B, minus my initial point, the coordinates of A. So vector B, which is basically the coordinates of B, minus vector A, the coordinates of A, and that'll get it for me. So it looks like the B vector will be perfectly on this axis right here, on this plane. So it's going to have an x coordinate of 0. So 0 in the x. Looks like positive 3 feet in the y direction. So a positive 3 in the j. And looks like it's going to be up this amount, which is going to be 1 foot in the positive z. For a, looks like a will be this distance out, 1.5 in the positive x direction. Looks like it's going to be 0 in the y. Looks like this point A is on this xz plane. So 0 in the j direction. And looks like point A is on the floor, the xy plane. So that would be a z component of 0. All right, now we just have to subtract coordinates of b minus coordinates of a. And if we carry out that math, we'll get the full position vector from A to B. So here's that. Per my dot product equation, I'll probably want the magnitudes of both vectors. The magnitude of the force vector already done for us. It's 90. Magnitude of F will equal 90. Now for the magnitude of R, we'll actually have to do the sum of the squares of the components. We'll have to do Pythagorean theorem. Nothing too crazy there. We'll get 3.5 feet. So the length of position vector from A to B is 3.5 feet. So now we can execute the dot product plan we had from the beginning. 
Let's start by crunching this left hand side of the dot product. And remember to get f cosine theta by itself we need to divide both sides of this dot product equation by the length of our position vector that 3.5 so we can cancel it out on that right hand side and leave us with f cosine of theta so we'll just divide this whole thing by 3.5 and that will equal the f cosine of theta that we want it'll leave us with this adjacent side the component of our f vector that is parallel in the direction of that position vector a b so let's just crunch the math here and we'll get 63.18 now this is a component a part of this larger force vector right here so the units for this number will be in pounds and this is the uh, parallel component let's just I'll symbol symbolize that so coming over to our little diagram over on the right that adjacent side is 63.18 we know that this hypotenuse is 90 that's the length of that force so we can easily find this remaining opposite side using Pythagorean theorem the hypotenuse squared will equal the length of one side squared plus the remaining side squared so if we solve for that we will get 64.1 and again the units are pounds so here is the perpendicular component of f that's perpendicular to that diagonal a to b and here is the component of that force that is parallel to in the direction of the a to b line so I always say don't memorize just memorize only the dot product because the dot product is useful in so many engineering classes and just know that you can manipulate this dot product equation to figure out different sorts of things I know the statics books throws some crazy equations at you and I see a lot of people memorizing them and it just makes me sad because you know you really don't need to so hope that made sense feel free to ask any questions you may have in the comments